All right, so the final problem um, that you guys were given was that uh, problem chapter 4, problem 18, and I did, a sol I did solutions for chapter 4, problem 17. Now also, this will help you with the take-home test. So this is exactly what take-home test 6 is going to be, be like. So first thing is you're given, we're going to do a concrete mix design. You're given 2,000 PSI, non-air and train, non-reinforced, interior slab on grade, maximum aggregate size 1 inch, and then the aggregate data is on the top of page 138 in your book. So I've got the appendix on the right side of my screen and I've got the step-by-step -step instructions on the left side. So step one is choice and you will see the table 6.3.1. That's where you go to get your minimum and maximum slump. So the problem that we got was a pavement. It was a slab on grade. So pavement and slabs are three and one. So, um, just look and see what you're given, if it's, if it's footings, or if it's a wall, if it's slab on grade, you'll just look at this table and that'll get, determine what your max and min needs to be for your slump. So because ours, ours was an interior slab on grade, it was three and one. So everybody got to do a slump last week, so you understand that's the first thing that you'll do once concrete, concrete truck comes is do a slump. If it does not meet that, and let's say it's less than one, because that's the minimum, you can have the, the concrete truck add more water and then you would do it again. Um, if it's more than that, uh, you could deny it, send it back, because um, it's very important. That's the first first test we're going to do that would let us know how important or how well this um, concrete is going to hold up. So step two is your choice of maximum, maximum aggregate size. Typically that's done by your sieve analysis, um, but in the problem they gave it to us and it's one. So step three is estimating how much mixing water you need and how much air content is in there. So we're going to use table 6.3.3 which is part of the ACI which is American Concrete Institute. Um, this, these are guidelines for, from them. So since we're using non-air and train, we'll use the top portion of the table. Our maximum aggregate size is 1, and we're working with 3 to 4 inches for slump. So our water would be 325. So I've got that right there. Now, the next thing you want to do is look at air. Since this is non-air and train, you're still going to get air in there as, as you're mixing it and they have voids in there. Water, cement, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate. There's still voids in there. So that's 1%. If we were looking at something that was an air and train and it's something like a column that's for a bridge that's in water that has a lot of uh, severe exposure, we would be looking at the bottom part of this chart. Um, so that's the chart you'll use and you'll put that in your step three. All right, so step four is our water to cement ratio. So it's the selection of the water cement ratio. So we're going to look at table 6.3.4a. We have 2,000 PSI and we have non-air and train, so our water cement ratio would be 0.82. So you would bring down your water value from step 3 and divide the water by your 0 0.82 and that would give you how much um, cement you would need at, at um, way out. So we'd have 396 pounds of cement. Now again, if 
this was in an area where there's going to be severe exposure, we would not want to use this table. We would use the second table up at the top. We would use the B table. So because ours is, there's no, ex, no exposure, it's moderate. Um, so just look and see. Um, I think when I gave you 18, it was air entrained. So you would definitely want to look at that because if it's air entrained and moderate exposure, um, look and see, you would probably be using the second chart. Okay, this is our major chart. Only would we use the other one if we got some severe um, exposure and it was um, somewhere where it was in water um, to all kinds of elements of temperatures, you would want to switch and use the other chart. All right, so step six is going to be figuring out how much coarse aggregate we're going to use. Or need. Um, so we already did step five. Step six. So we're going to use the table again, table 6.3.6. .6. Now make sure that you, when you're looking at this table, that this column here is the fineness modulus for fine aggregate. Don't get confused and say, okay, we're doing coarse aggregate, so I'm going to look at the fineness modulus of the coarse aggregate. It doesn't do it that way. Because if you'd look in the problem, the fineness modulus coarse aggregate is six, and it doesn't even fit on this chart. So it's your fine aggregate. So it was 0. Point, um, finest modulus 2.7, which it fell between the 2.5 and 2, or 2.6 and 2.8. Fell right in between. It's 1 inch. So it fell between the 0. 0.69 and 0. 0.67. So there's where I got 0. 0.68 for the answer. So then the next one is to calculate your weight. That's going to be based off the calculation we got from tape or the table we, the unit of volume calculation or table resort we got 0 0.68 times 27, which right here it's telling you to do that, times 27, and then times the unit weight of your course aggregate. And that was in the table. Um, given, which was 95 pounds per cubic foot. So when I multiply that all together, it gives you 1744 pounds, 1744 pounds. And I got a little error there. That should be actually 27 feet cubed. Because um, what it is, is we're actually designing all this based off when we do volume, um, solid volume, it's going to be one cubic foot or one cubic yard, which is three by three by three. And that's gonna come into play right here. All right, so estimating how much fine aggregate we have. There's two ways to do it. One's gonna be just weight, and then one's by solid volume. Solid volume is more aggregate, but I'm gonna show you really how you can do it from weight. All right, so the first one would be a, a weight. And this chart says it's it's where you got one inch for our maximum, not air and trained. So how much all of the ingredients should weigh up to should be 4,010 pounds. All right, so what we would do is we'd add our water, cement, and coarse aggregate that we had already um, calculated total that up, and then subtract that from the 4,010. And that leaves us with 1,545 pounds of fine aggregate. Um, but that it's not as aggregate, it's not as accurate as the solid volume is. So solid volume is the preferred um, method for this. So solid volume would be taking the ingredients and like I was saying, you're gonna put it in a three by three by three. So 27 cubic foot area, which would be a cubic yard. All right, I'm gonna flip down real quick and show you, here's an example of how the calculations are done. So based off our original weight of water, which is 325 pounds, 
you're going to divide that by the unit weight of water. Really, you would take your weight and then times the specific gravity of the material times unit weight of water. Well, specific gravity of water is 1, so I don't show that. So 325 divided by 62.4 will give you 521 cubic feet. Um, then the next one would be cement. Cement's 396. And we're going to divide that by specific gravity of cement. Typically, we're going to use 3.15 for cement and then times unit weight of water. So that would give us 2.01. And then the third calculation would be coarse aggregate, which we got 1744. Divide that by the specific gravity of the coarse aggregate, which was came from the aggregate data in the problem, which was 2.68 times unit weight of water. So we would left we were left with 10.43. Now we've got to do the air. So remember we had air from step three. That was 1.5. We're gonna divide that by 100 to get it out of the percent form and multiply it by 27. And we'd be left with 0.41. So to estimate the fine aggregate, you're gonna total up water, cement, coarse aggregate, and air. If you total them up, you get 18.06 cubic feet. And then we'll subtract that from 27, and it'll give us a remaining solid volume of 8.94. That would be how much space that the fine aggregate needs to take up, uh, would take up. So the formula for solid volume is solid volume equals the weight divided by specific gravity times unit weight of water. So the solid volume was 8.94 equals to weight, which is what we're looking for, divided by the specific gravity, and that would be the fine aggregate, and that comes from the chart, 2.59 times unit weight of water. That would give us 1445. So that would be how much fine aggregate we would weigh out. All right, so um, here's you know an example what you can look at. There was the first one, and there's the solid volume one. All right, so we're going back to the final step, and the final step would be adjustments. And we're going to adjust for the moisture that's in the aggregate. So typically, here's what happens. Um, when you're mixing, you know, your concrete and you're adding coarse aggregate and fine aggregate and it's been sitting outside on your stockyard or you know stored up there's water already in that aggregate so if you add if you you know weigh out your aggregate which actually some of that weight includes water you're going to have way too much mixing water so there's why we have found out what the percent of moisture is for the absorbed and the front percent moisture for free. That way we can adjust our weights for that. So if you weigh out um, 1,744 pounds of cement, you've got water in there. So you really don't have a true weight of aggregate. So when we figure out how much water of that 1,744 is water, we're going to add back in, we're going to add more aggregate to that to make sure that we're getting exactly, weighing out exactly how much aggregate we need. So the best way to do this is to set up a chart, put your initial weights, 325 water, 396 cement, cement doesn't change, you can just go ahead and come across, coarse aggregate, 17, 1,744, fine aggregate, 1,445. Next column is your uh, percent absorption. So it was given, it was 0.5 for coarse and one for fine. So to get it out of a percent form, you need to divide it by 100 and then multiply that by your original weight. So 1744, times 
0.5 divided by 100 should give you 8.72 pounds. So that's how much um, water we're going to have in there. And then the fine aggregate would be 1445 times 1 divided by 100, which would be 14.45. And so, um, and here's how I show you how we calculate that. Then the next step would be free moisture. And um, free for coarse was 1 and fine was 3. So I'm going to go back to my initial weight, 1744, times 1 divided by 100 gives me 17.44. And then for the fine aggregate, it's going to be 1445 times 3 divided by 100, which is 43.35. When you did your calculations from my results in the lab, they looked real similar to this. All right, so... You would add the, both the pounds water up from your feet free moisture, which if you add them together, you get 60.79. We're going to add that up here to the top. So now we would take 325 minus the 60.79. The reason we're subtracting that is because that water is already in the coarse and fine aggregate. So we want to reduce our initial water by that amount. So that would give us 264.21. Cement comes over. Coarse aggregate is going to be initial weight plus how much water plus um, the, the how much water is determined by free moisture. So you would add all three to get a total weight of 1770. And then you would do the same thing for fine aggregate, which would be 1445 plus 14. 1,445 plus 1445 plus 43.35, which gives us a, a total of 1502. So that would be your, your um, weights, and that would be what we would batch, and we should be able to get everything that we need. We'd, add, we'd adjust for coarse aggregate. Um, we're going to add extra in there for, to get a true actual weight. So hopefully this will help you work your um, take home test six and any other um, problems that you would have in the future.